Okay, so here we've got our unit under test. It's a relatively simple uh, 11 way harness uh, with some interconnect links on the front, which means we can create open circuits, short circuits, cross wires, high voltage insulation breakdowns, the kind of faults that you're likely to find in the harness shop. When we're creating our software, there's three areas that we concentrate on. How to create test programs, how easy we can make that. How to run the test programs, how simple we can make that for an untrained operator. And then what the system tells you at the end of a test. What the test report tells you in terms of how easy it is to diagnose the error, how easy it is to fix the error, and then retest and release that product. So there are three ways of creating a test program with NK test systems. There's the auto learn facility, which allows the test system to connect to your harness, automatically interrogate all connections within that harness and create a test program. Of course, it's then up to you, the engineer or operator, to validate that the harness you've learned is good. That becomes your golden harness test program. You can create test programs manually, and unlike other test systems on the market, there is no programming language with the MK system. If you can work within Excel or tabular tools like that, you can create a test program relatively simply. You can see here, your connections table is very much like an Excel table. It's a drop-down, menu-driven, simple connections table test program. No programming language. The third way is APG or automatic program generation, and that's what we're going to concentrate on in this demonstration, because the vast majority of our customers are using APG on a day-to-day -day basis. In order to use APG, there are two files that you need. Uh, you need a connections table, so what connector and pin is connected to what connector and pin, and you also need what we call an XREF file. Some people call it an address correspondence file, so it's how the test system is connected to the product. So here we have our net list or connections table. Connector A, pin 1 is connected to connector B, pin 1. Simple as that. Here we have our XREF file showing how the test point is connected to the product. So to create the test program, we will simply open Utilities, APG, Standard APG. This APG tool is a core feature within our software and comes free of charge. There's no additional service charges, maintenance charges for this. It's there as a standard. So we're going to create a program for this product. I need to add the file. So add a connections file. There we go. I've brought in that connections file and you can see the columns from connector A, the connector name, from the suffix, the pin within that connector, to connector name, two suffix. If we had a reference or a wire name or a wire ident laser marked on that wire, they could be in these columns too. Anything which is useful for the operator. We now need to map this import file from ident, from suffix, to ident, to suffix. Very importantly, we can save this map so we only have to ever have to do it the first time. You can save maps for particular customers, for particular import structures, so you do it once. Next time, you simply import the data and create the program. Okay. Now I'll import the XREF, or the way the system is connected to the test system, my XREF. And you can see here, I've saved the map for that already. When I open the map, it's already mapped for me. Going forward. We can now run through each of the APG settings, allocating the current, voltage, expected resistance range, high voltage, and so forth. However, we can set it up also as a default value, so all we've got to do is go straight to the bottom, run APG, and run it. And we've created a test program, as simple as that. It takes fractions of a second. It doesn't take much longer, even if you have thousands of connections, because it's pure raw data that we're bringing in. There's not a lot of resolving to be done on this. Very importantly though, if you have internal connections within that file, if you have active components, our APG tools can resolve those too. That would take a little longer, but we'll demonstrate that later. So we've got a test program. And if I go into that program, you can see what it's created. So it has created a test program that's going to test across each of those connections for that resistance range, it is also, having created the continuity net, used that continuity net to create a short circuit test and to automatically create the insulation test. 
If I go into the insulation test and have a look at it, and you can see we're going to test each net against all others. In this case at 500 volts, and we're looking for a resistance greater than 10 megaohms, all created automatically. Something else that may be useful then for the operator would be to create an operator instruction. So, very simply, we can open up the operator instruction, add one, maybe how to hook up. We'll call this the hookup instruction. Hook up like this. There we go. The operator will get an instruction before the test begins on how to connect the harness. Right? And when I go to the subtest, to the first subtest, operator instructions, I want to add that operator instruction. It's done. As simple as that. So automatically we've created a test program which is going to test continuity resistance, it's going to check for short circuits, it's going to check for insulation resistance across each of these nets, and it's going to tell the operator how to run that test. So, I'm going to save that test program. Demo, hash one. Save. While we're on APG, you can see various functions are available there, so different file structures, third party, if you're looking to create a test program from a third party test system. Uh, generation 2, so APG, or translation from our earlier generations of software. Standard APG, I've just demonstrated. Active components, an impressive function. This is where the system will automatically create a test program, including function testing active components such as relays, contactors, LEDs, lights, motors, fully automatically, and this is included within our core test system. Having created the test program, I'm closing down the editor, opening up the runner. And again, this can be done remotely from the test system. You can create test programs in your office, across the network, send them to the test system, import them into the test system, whatever's most convenient for you. So here I'm going to import a test program. Again, importantly, you don't need to actually create test programs within the editor. You can create them directly within the runner. So having set up your APG structure, the operator can come to the test system, aim the test system at the file structure or the folder location for your, prop, your data, import the data, create a program, and run it all fully automatically. Here we're going to import the program that we just created, demo hash one, and open. So the program's been brought in. Three dots mean that nothing has happened with that program yet. It hasn't been run. Unlike these programs below, green tick means it was run. And the last time it ran, it passed. So let's run the test. It's immediately offering me the three subtests that were created earlier. I can run the continuity tests, the shorts test, the insulation high voltage test, or all three. In this case, we'll run all three. Immediately it's given me my operator instruction, which we created earlier. Any kind of format of instruction can be created. Simple text, graphical, whatever's required to make it simple for the operator to run the test. Continuity test run, short circuit test run, and now it's on the high voltage test. During the test, we can open up a sub report and see how the test is going through the test. So if it's a very long test, you can review and analyze individual failures during the test. This test is relatively short, so we don't need to do that. There we go, the test is complete. And we've got our test report. Everything's green, great, that means it's passed. You can see test is state passed. We've got our description, our calibration date, our test date, everything within the header. Nice clear report. So our continuity test phase from connector A1 to connector B1. The name of that connection, whatever might be on the wire, the laser mark ident or red wire, green wire, whatever the circuit might require. The expected measurement value and tolerances, the measured value and the test state, in this case pass. 
and again everything is green if it's passed. The short circuit test, we can see it's run a short circuit test and no failures were found as expected. High voltage insulation breakdown test or insulation resistance test from each net to all others within that subtest. We put in 500 volts, we're expecting more than 10 mega ohms. In fact, we've measured 88, 83, 67 megs between each of those groups, so passed. So as we said earlier, a very clear report, very simple to understand. There's no major skills required to understand green means passed. We're in a good place. So let's create a, a failure, a simple failure. Run that test again. So we've got an open circuit. This should tell me an open circuit between connector A, pin 1, and connector B, pin 1. That's what we know over here. So that's my operator instruction. Okay, straight away we can see we've got one failure. And our test report is showing red, we've failed. Let's find out what that failure is. So from connector A, pin 1, to connector B, pin 1, it's telling me to check for an open circuit. So not simply an error message or anything that's difficult to understand, it's telling me we have an open circuit between those two points. If you have a test unit under test which is very large with many thousands of measurements and test points in between them, and you don't want to go hunting for that fail point, you can, at the clicker of a button, say, show me only the fail points. So fails only, it's only going to show me that single measurement which failed. There we are. So you're not having to find it between many hundreds of green measurements to find the single red measurement. It's showing you just that point. And at the click of a button we can go back to show me all results. So we go back to our all results. You can see at the top here we can print the report, we can export it to XML, export it to PDF, and you can set the system up to do that automatically at the end of every test. So there's our test report. We go back home, we'll create a... Oh, and you can see here that the tested state against that program is now an alert. Last time we ran that test, it failed. And I can quickly go back into this last results and see what happened last time we ran the test. And again, you've got that last report which shows the failed point. Okay. One of the great options that you have with the system is this create test from failures. The option here at the top. Again, if you're running a test program with many hundreds of connections in it and you find four, five, six failures during that test run, the system can automatically create you a test program of those failures only. So you can go in and try to repair that harness or that assembly and keep running those failed points again and again until you clear them and then go back to the full program and get a clean test run. All of this done fully automatically for you. Let's create a different fault. So we'll go with a miswire or an inversion. Most common fault found in a harness shop, I understand. The system should find two opens, two shorts, resolve the addresses and tell you that one wire is crossed with another. So let's run that test and check. I won't run the high voltage test because I know it's going to fail low voltage in this case. So there we go. Okay, so again, as expected, my report has failed. I found the two opens, so A1 to B1 is open, A2 to B2 is open. And having run the shorts test, it's now analyzed and told me that A1 to B1 is crossed with A2 to B2. It's given me a very clear diagnostics. It's telling me we have an inversion. So it's not up to the operator to diagnose the fault. The system is diagnosing it for you. Let's repair my harness. Okay. Another fault will replicate very quickly is a insulation breakdown. So the insulation test or the insulation resistance test, similar to the dielectric test but with DC, um, is charging each net in turn, in this case with 500 volts, that's the APG um, defaults that we, that we put in there. 
It's charging each net in turn with 500 volts, looking for current leakage between that net and all others, and then calculating the resistance um, of that insulator as a result of knowing the voltage, knowing the current leakage. So I'm going to put a, a resistor between two of the nets, uh, which allows the current to leak from one net to the group and will show up as an insulation breakdown. So let's run this test. I won't run the two low voltage test, go straight into the insulation test. And again, this is a great indication that you can select subtests to run. And if you have a failure and you want to rerun those individual subtests during uh, the repair of the harness, you can do. It's very simple, it's just clicking a button. No major skills required, very simple to use. So let's run that. Okay, so what the system has done is it's found a failure and it's set up at the moment to retry those fail points three times before moving on and saying actually it's a failure. Uh, this allows you to, you can set how many retries that you have. Um, if you have a particularly humid atmosphere, um, that's often a useful uh, tool to use. During the test, as I mentioned, you can open up and see the fail points during the test. So again, if you have a large assembly, you can start investigating failures during the, during the test process. So here we go, we've got a failure, and if we go to the insulation test, it's telling me that net A1 to B1, which is this first net, is failed to wall, and net A2 to B2 has failed to wall. So we know that between A1, B1, and A2, B2, these two nets, we have a breakdown. Most common failures tend to be to ground, um, and in that case it would tell you that A1 to B1 to ground has failed. Um, so again, very, very good, clear diagnostics as to the nature and location of that failure. So let's repair my harness. I've gone in there and I've cleaned the debris out from the back of the, or the inside of the connector, or I've had a look and I've repaired the insulator where it's cracked. Let's go home, run this whole test again. Great, so we've done a great job, we've repaired the harness, we've put it through test, the harness is ready to ship, we have a test report which we can send on to our customer as well. So that's the, the clarity of the system, the, the ease of diagnostics, the, the, the usefulness of that report. So we have a look again at this test report. Uh, we can see that the, the test took around 18 seconds to run, so very, very fast. And what did that system test during that process? It made 11 continuity resistance measurements, accurate to million, so very, very accurate. It ran a short circuit test across all the test points within that range. So we've got 11 connections, so 11 times 11, 121 uh, measurements to check for any short circuits during that process. Very, very fast, and it took a, a second to run all those tests. And then it's run a high voltage, 500 volts, insulation breakdown test uh, of each net against all others. So a very comprehensive test as well as giving an operator instruction um, at the beginning of the test program and delivering the diagnostics at the end. So comparing that to a manual test or one of your semi-automatic tests, you can see the speed and simplicity of this product. Another great feature of the system is manual mode or single point test. So here we have a failed connection. I can see that from A7 to connector C, pin B, Test point 7 to 18 is open circuit, and sure enough, that's because I've opened the circuit. So if we come back home, we go into tools, I can create a single point test. So I can select the XREF or interface map for any particular product to make sure that the system is giving you addresses relative to your product. So 11 way demo. I can select the points that I want to measure. So you can see A7 to connect to C, B, rather than just the test points. And I can 
decide what type of test I want to run, low voltage, high voltage, capacitance, and so forth. In this case, low voltage continuity. And sure enough, it's a clamp voltage, open circuit. And as I close this up, you can see it's now measuring 2.23, 2.3 ohms. If I remove this resistor, 1.3 ohms. It's a one ohm resistor. So you can see a very useful diagnostics tool that means you don't have to run complete programs. When I go back home, you can see here that the program failed last time I ran it. If I go to run this test, having fixed that issue, I now have a good test. So to finish off, we've shown you how to create a test program automatically for a simple end-to-end -end harness. What happens if your harness has terminal blocks or internal connections or branches? Something a little bit more complex. Uh, so I'll show you an example. So here we've got a connections table for a very small harness. Uh, from connector auxiliary, auxiliary A out to auxiliary B as a straight connection. And then augs C, D and E all go into a terminal block. So in fact, augs C will be connected through the terminal block to D, and it will also be connected through the terminal block to E. And at the end we've got orgs F is connected to G, H, and I. It's a branch connection, so something a little bit more complex. i close that down. APG, standard APG. Let's add a file, so that connections file that we just saw. Open that, and the map exists, as I said earlier. You can save maps so you never have to create them again. Add the extra file, the way that the test system is connected to the harness. And again, the map has already been created and saved, so okay. So I go straight to run that APG, and it's created a test program automatically for me. Now in this instance, the settings, the APG settings, had defined that the operator wanted to create a continuity resistance test, a short circuit scan, a high voltage insulation test, and then an AC dielectric high pot test, and then a secondary DC high pot test to check that the AC hadn't caused some issue with the harness. So a fairly complex test, and you saw how quickly that test program was created. If I go into the netlist, view the connections, Again, we can see what I mentioned earlier, that org C is connected through the terminal block out to D and E. So the system has resolved those internal connections. The branch connections, F, is connected to G, H, and I, a branch connection set. And that's as complex as it gets. So APG for simple harnesses, also complex harnesses with internal connections, branches, and so forth. The next phase would be APG, with active components. So if you have uh, an equipped panel, a full vehicle aircraft with relays, solenoids, contactors, LEDs, bulbs, you can create a component library of those active components and the system can create that test program fully automatically for you, even for complex active assemblies.